All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's event. My name is John Stearns, and I'm a team lead here in the Americas for our Zoom Rooms and Spaces organization. And I'm here with some of my team, as well as some of our friends from Yaylink today to show the latest and greatest innovations of Yaylink Rooms and Spaces devices working together with the power of Zoom platform. Uh, so today you'll get a chance to see how both organizations are helping our customers support a modern, flexible workplace, deliver better meeting equity in the conference room and in the classroom, and how we embed AI into a day in the life of a user leveraging the Zoom platform in this ever-evolving hybrid world. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping notes. This is webinar format, as you can see, um, so we can't see you. Um, if you have questions, feel free to use the Q&A that's built into the tool. We'll go ahead and address them as we go along. We'll save some time toward the end um, in case we get a backlog of questions. We can make sure that we hammer through those. Uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, and get started. I'd like to welcome my friend Aaron from Yaylink. Hello, Aaron. Welcome. So excited, uh, so excited to be here uh, with Mark together in uh, Zoom San Jose office today. And uh, welcome everyone to join today's uh, webinar. This is Aaron Liu from Yaylink. So today that we will showcase that all the uh, powerful tools that are uh, uh, powered by uh, Zoom and also Yaylink Endpoint to showcase the, the modern workspace scenario covered by all the room size uh, in this uh, experience tour. And uh, also that we will showcase some cool features that we Zoom can bring in like a, a receptionist and also uh, workspace reservations, that kind of things. And uh, for today's tour, definitely Mark will host the tour with you together. And uh, I will see you later. Yeah, hand over to you. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, wow. Aaron. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We're so happy to show you guys the innovation today. Uh, just a year ago, you, if you just would have saw the amount of innovation that Yaylink's done uh, working together with the Zoom team, there's so many cool uh, products we've developed that so we're going to show you today. Let's just jump right in so we can show you. Remember, this is a live tour, so if you have any questions, please put them in chat, and we'll try our best to answer them in a timely fashion. When I walk in through uh, the front doors over here at Zoom headquarters, whether I'm a Zoomie or a visitor, one of the things I get greeted with if it's not a live person is our virtual kiosk. The nice thing with virtual kiosk over here, super simple to set up. As you can see here, I have an A10, which is a multi-purpose device over here. The A10 is doing a virtual kiosk over here, as you can see. However, this can also be used in a smaller huddle space. Uh, recommended for two to about five people. Um, very powerful what we could do with, with this A10. I'm going to click on the receptionist. Now, you're going to see a submenu right here. The nice thing about the submenu is it's completely customizable. So here we have receptionist, we have deliveries, catering. Um, I have the security button. If something goes wrong here, um, I can click on that and quickly get connected to the security team. Uh, facilities as well, nice. If I, uh, someone spills something or breaks some glass over here, we call facilities, they come and they clean it up really quickly, which is nice. IT support, my Mac or PC, if I want to open it up and click on that button, I'm going to get help immediately. Also, that's tied into our contact center, which is really nice because when I click that button, I don't know who from IT I'm going to get, I just know I'm going to get someone from IT. And we can have advanced call queues like maybe a team a bank of uh, IT specialists takes calls from 8 to 12, and then the rest of the day, 12 to 5, we have a different bank of IT specialists. And by the way, when I click that button, they could be here in the building, or they can be at home. So it's a way to uh, allow that hybrid workforce as well. What I'm going to do today is go and click on receptionist. And when I click on receptionist, once again, it's going to go find me a live receptionist so that I can ask uh, you know, for permission to come on the tour today. Hi, Ed. Hi Good morning, Mark. Hey, so um, we have the Yaylink tour this morning. Mind if we bring all these folks through for a tour? Absolutely. And be sure to check in with Workspace Reservation. Great point. Thank you. Great point. Um, so what Ed just alluded to is I totally forgot to book a space before I came to the office today. But the nice thing here with Virtual Kiosk over here in this uh, application, I have Workspace Reservation. So here I get a live snapshot here of the tour floor where we're at today. I can see what's available, what's not. I definitely want to go um, work next to Ed. So what I'm going to do is go and click on this phone over here, this desk, hot desk. I can see that it's available from you know pretty much the whole day, but I just want it for about an hour. I'm going to go and click on next. The nice thing here is it gives me a QR code. And what I could do is just open up my camera and, uh, or my Zoom app, go and hit reserve. What's happening here in the background is not only did I just reserve that desk, but since it has a phone over here, and you can see now that it has my picture, I actually reserved the desk and that um, phone is going to take on my persona. It's going to have my phone number, my contacts, and my calendar all there waiting for me when I check in. So let's go and do that now. 
So I'm going to go over here to the flagship Yealink phone over here, the video phone. And the nice thing over here is just like that, you can see it's waiting for me to check in. How cool is this? I have the check in button, which I can click on, or I could just once again, go right back to my zoom app or my camera, click on the, uh, the, the QR code reader that's built into our app, hit check in. What's happening now in the background is this phone is getting configured for Mark Berrigan. How cool is this? So not only did I get this desk, but this phone now has my calendar invites over here. I can see here that I could put a pin code if I need to. Now, if I put a pin code, that just allows me to walk away and secure the device, but I'll set that up later. And just like that, now you can see over here that it's Mark Berrigan's phone. It has my phone number, my calendar, and of course, um, my contact all into to one over here. So very powerful. I'll also mention with workspace reservation that if you don't have a, a Yealink video device, we do have the capability of printing out QR codes. And we mention this because not all desks will have phones. Um, so basically you can print these out and you can scale that out even more. So highly recommend you use more video and more phone uh, with Yealink. However, we do have the capability to print out Q QR codes as well. Yeah, so with workspace reservation, real quick, Mark, um, this is a homegrown part of the Zoom platform that we launched last year, really to address our customers' needs for how do we handle this flexible hybrid work strategy, right? A lot of our uh, customers are condensing their real estate footprints, which means not everyone gets a dedicated workstation anymore. So this hoteling and hot desking model has been you know, very uh, popular in the industry as of late. So we built this you know, from the ground up. And I think the way that we integrate with Zoom devices like the Yealink Zoom phone appliances and with Zoom rooms, as you'll see in our virtual kiosk, we really have a differentiator in the marketplace there. And I think the biggest one, um, example of that is how we embed AI into the experience. So as a user, if I did plan ahead um, and I didn't have to book from the virtual kiosk, for example, I can make reservations from the Zoom web portal or right in the Zoom clients on mobile and desktop. And what we built in is Zoom suggestions. And so Zoom can actually recommend a desk that's nearby people that are on my team, people that I meet with, uh, you know, that I plan to meet with for the day. And it's leveraging AI based on a, a variety of models there. It can even suggest dates for me to go into the office. So I don't have to email or chat with people on my team to find out, hey, when's everyone going to be in the office? Zoom can actually tell me next Thursday, you know, your team's going to be in there. This might be a good day to go into the office. Um, so, we're, you know, this is uh, a really powerful part in the AI and, this, and Zoom Smart Suggestions is just going to get more and more sophisticated over time. Uh, so we're super excited about how we can really uh, disrupt and innovate in the space. Great point, John. And we're no exception, right? John just mentioned it, that uh, here at Zoom prior to the pandemic, we actually had assigned desks. Now, post-pandemic, we actually have shared spaces. So we use workspace reservation. We used to use a third-party tool. We're able to consolidate that down onto our own platform, as many customers are starting to do today. Now, before I jump into our first space, which is a large conference room, I have over here a scheduling display. Now, this is the Yealink scheduling display over here, which is nice. I have this big, nice, bright red or green LED on the side over here. Um, I can walk right up to it, and I can see that it's obviously booked right now, but if I wanted to pick a time for later in the day, um, a later time and the amount of time that I want, it's really easy for me to do that. If I needed a space right now at a different room, there is reserve another room. And once again, I get to that floor plan. So like John was mentioning, whether I'm at home on my Mac or PC, I'm on my mobile device on the way to work, or here at work, I have multiple places to see my floor plan. And when I go over to it, and maybe I want Emerald Bay, which I know is available at that time slot, I can click on reserve, and it takes me to the interface of yet a different room altogether. Now, the nice thing about these Yealink scheduling displays, if I look down the hall over here, when I get to headquarters, I can quickly see what room's available and which one's not based on the red or green LED indicators that these Yealink scheduling displays have. So very powerful, very simple to set up. In the past, this was complicated. Now it's super simple. This is running Zoom Room on it, um, Zoom Room scheduling software on it, and it just goes right to our portal and you schedule them. So I only mention that because in the past, it was really complicated to go and get a third-party device and have uh, an integrator come and have to do all that configuration, we no longer have to do that. Okay, our first stop over here is our large conference room. This is about 30 feet by 15 feet in width. And what, you know, what we did in this space is also something that is really a lot more scalable. Prior to the pandemic here, we had ceiling speakers, um, we had uh, ceiling microphones as well, tons of AV gear running back to the behind the screens over here. 
we took all that stuff out. So no more ceiling speakers. Uh, we did put table microphones. We're going to display right now because there's a lot of glass in this room. And normally you can get away with the embedded microphones that this uh, Yealink A30 bar has. Um, it also has a big booming speaker. Um, however, since we do have the glass, we did enhance the space with table microphones. They're wireless. You're going to see how easy it is for those to set up right now in a second. Um, but very simple. So we went from a complicated space that took about two to three days to set up and about twenty to thirty thousand dollars down to this Yealink bar, so a five thousand dollar setup, but didn't compromise on anything in terms of um, quality, as you're going to see right now. So we're going to jump into the call. Um, before I do that, I'm going to pair to this space over here. So I'm going to open up my uh, Zoom controller app, and there's an ultrasonic frequency coming from this space, and you can see how easy it is for me to pair to the device. And let me jump into the call with you. Go ahead and unmute. So as you can see over here, really quickly, um, everything I do in this space, whether it's I uh, mute my camera, adjust my volume, reflects on this uh, Yealink uh, touch panel, as well as on here on the software on my phone. So it just basically mirrors when I pair to the room. Now, let me go and show you this space over here. This is really cool. So we purposely left this zoom all the way out. I'm about 26 feet back. Now, this camera is extremely powerful on how I could do this. This has two cameras here on the A30, but when I go ahead and click on the head of the table shot, I'm quickly gonna age, unfortunately, in real time. You can now see my gray uh, beard and, and hair on the side. So just very clear, crisp that, um, capabilities that we have with this camera. So it can fit in a, a room of this size. Also, I mentioned over here, we didn't have to run any wires to the table. The nice thing here is I have these hockey pucks over here. This is the Yealink wireless microphones. How cool is this? They travel with me if it's an important meeting and I need to have that rich audio, I can get it really close to me. Um, I, can, I can unmute, which is really cool, with this wireless mic. Another good practical use for it is, uh, you know, we have our companion whiteboard back here. So if I wanted to come back to the back of the room, I can quickly take this microphone and put it back over here. So very powerful solution with the wireless mics. And this is just a powering base on the table. So this saves you from that core drilling you've got to do, right? And we could just put these wireless mics on the table. So usually in a space like this, if we don't have so much glass, we can get away with just the microphones in the bar. But in this case with Yealink, we can use these wireless mics to take it to the next level. John, do you want to add anything there? No, I think that's good. We're, uh, we had a question come in um, that we're, we're addressing live. So I think we're, uh, we're all caught up here. Awesome. Now, another thing over here, you can see that, by the way, this is a third party companion whiteboard behind me. So this completely works and is compatible with the Yealink uh, portfolio simply because they're using the Zoom Room software. But another thing we're going to do in this space is we have wireless screen sharing. So all I'm going to do here is open up my Zoom client, click on share screen, an ultrasonic frequency, just like it did on my phone, hits me from up here. And now I can show you guys the product page for Yealink to show you all the products that they have. Such cool innovation. Um, and the nice thing here, full motion, wireless screen sharing, no wires over here. We used to use HDMI in all of our rooms here. We've since stopped. So we uh, invite you to come to Infocom booth 3480, as you just saw, to see more of these innovations next week at Infocom. And when I'm done, all I got to do is hit stop sharing. And just like that, we're off and running. So very powerful wireless screen sharing capabilities with ultrasonic pairing. So for the user, it's extremely simple to just hit the share button right from the Zoom client. So much more to show you, so I'm going to jump out and go to the next stop. Be right back. Okay. The next stop we're going to do is we're going to take a little detour. So we're showing you office spaces. However, right now we're going to show you how Zoom and Yealink work in a clinical setting at a hospital. So a lot of innovation here. Now in this space over here, we're going to show you a demonstration, two demonstrations. We're going to show you a patient room of the future using a Yealink uh, A20. And we're also going to show you a med sim using UVC 86 cameras. Now we have over here patient Lawson. Patient Lawson just checked into the hospital. Most hospital stays include a bed and usually, you know, a room and of course a television or a display. 
What I'm going to do here is, you know, most also displays have what's called a pillow speaker. This pillow speaker is vital to a patient room because it controls um, the volume of the TV, the t TV channel, but more importantly, it connects them to the nurses uh, on, on that floor. And so pillow speakers, we were told in order to do a, a video conferencing integration, you have to integrate here because we're not going to put additional touch displays on the actual bedside. It's just more complication for the patient. So this right here is a real patient engagement platform. I can see my care team for the for this day. I can see my schedule for the day, my discharge information. Very cool, just like when you go do a hotel stay, you see all that information. Then of course I have my regular television stations that I can watch. If there's movies that the hospital puts on there, you can see that as well. But what I'm gonna do now is go back to the home over here. See the privacy shutter over here, very important. So this right here is not, it's, a, it's basically a Yealink A20 Zoom room connected to this engagement platform, this infotainment system. It's aware of it. When I get an incoming call, I have the capability of answering the call right from the pillow speaker. As you see here, the incoming calls coming in. Um, I hit accept number one over here. Privacy shutter pops open and the doctor now joins us. Hello, Mr. Lawson, Dr. Wilson here. We got the results of your lab test back, and it seems you have a rare case of synthetic plasticosis. The good news is you will outlast us all by hundreds of thousands of years. We'd like to get a closer look at your condition. We will transfer over to the medical cart now. So I'm going to go and hang up, leave call. How cool is this? Privacy shutter pops right back on, and it goes right back to what the patient was doing before. So true integration, very scalable. You don't have to do any custom code or any custom integration when you do this. It works off the shelf with a company called Vibe Health or Sonify, and then you just need the, uh, this Yealink A20, which has a privacy shutter, which makes it much more pleasant experience for patients in the room, right? So they don't, the, first of all, they don't have to answer the call, and then of course they have privacy when they're not in a call, and it just blends right into the background of the technology. Right, so that, that is very important, not just for doctors and nurses to do virtual rounds. We're not saying replace the in-person visit, but doctors do get stuck in the hallway and it takes a long time to come around to see patients. With this, it's much, much more efficient. And then here's the real kicker. During the pandemic, a lot of hospital rooms were closed off for patients to visit with friends and family. This allows more visitation for the patient, which now this makes it a must have in patient rooms instead of a nice to have. And we're getting a lot of hospitals that are rolling this out. And so, you know, this took us a while to develop to make sure it was scalable, but very powerful application with the A20 and the privacy shutter. Now, unfortunately, patient Lawson, we've rolled him into the surgery room. Um, now what you're gonna see over here is a, a big innovation over here. So we have the Yealink M-Core, which is their Zoom room, um, and then we have three UVC 86 cameras. Now, what you're gonna see is one at the back of the room capturing the entire room over here. Um, so that gives you that perception. We also have a secondary camera that really focuses in on the doctor who's going to be doing the procedure or the training because med sims are for more training. A remote surgical room as well is a, a part of this application. And then the last one, how cool is this? There's a UVC 86 camera that has full PTZ capabilities. So as a doctor, if I'm doing something or um, you know, doing a procedure or showing a training remotely, uh, any one of the students or other, other doctors are seeing it remotely can zoom in or zoom out. The doctor here doesn't have to do anything. They just can focus on the patient as others see this, uh, this live uh, training or a live surgery. Now, med sims are something, something that usually costs north of $100,000 to install. Why? Because usually it's a multi-camera system and basically you have a lot of AV gear. You have a DSP and video mixers that they all have to run to before they even get to a video system. The Zoom Room platform has opened up the capabilities to do something called multicam. That means one M Core Yealink can ingest three U UVC 86 cameras and show those different vantage points in a space. That has made it extremely powerful and no longer necessary to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. We built this out for about $15,000 in this space. So we're getting hospitals that are building more med sim or remote surgery rooms than before where they can only have budget to do maybe one uh, per hospital. So very powerful application. So that right there is how Yealink and Zoom have been working together to embed ourselves into the clinical settings. And notice that during this time, it was super simple for me to use the technology because that's something that we want to take into consideration is this has to be easy for the, uh, for, for the doctors and the nurses to use the technology. It can't be difficult. So. You know, we, a lot of time and effort went to making that a, a really, really powerful uh, solution. 
Next step, what we want to show you is uh, digital signage. So digital signage is something that we have throughout the campus here at Zoom. Um, we used to use Mac and PCs for our digital signage. Now we have the Yaylink Roomcast. This is really cool because that's Android. It's essentially an appliance which allows us to manage these remotely a lot more efficiently. We no longer have to babysit the OS. And you can see we could do a lot of cool things like E911 integration. Someone dials 911, it's going to quickly show on digital signage. It can also show first responders where it was dialed. We could play videos um, throughout this floor or maybe this building or this region. We also could do that floor plan again. So that floor, it's not interactive, but the floor plan here we could post up in digital signage to show the floor, what's available, what's not. So very powerful what we could do um, with digital signage. Also top right corner, you can see there's a sharing key. So if I just want to come in this area, share my laptop screen and use this, I could do that. Then of course over here you're seeing that we're actually streaming this live tour to digital signage. How cool is that? Uh, Franklin, our wizard in the background, did this on the fly to show you the power of digital signage. John, I'm going to pause in case there's any questions we want to answer there. From any caught up, uh, you know, there, but um, yeah, just to kind of reiterate on the signage side, I mean, this is this is an incredible value. In fact, even just looking at the kind of three core use cases of our signage with pushing content playlists, the wireless sharing that Mark mentioned, and the ability to broadcast any Zoom meeting or webinar in real time to these signage displays is very unique uh, in, in the world of, of signage there. In fact, we have a lot of clients that set up these um, Yealink room casts with Zoom digital signage just for some of their smaller spaces that just need a very simple wireless screen share solution. Because, you know, the alternatives out there, the Barco click shares, the Crestron um, Air Medias, the Immersive Solstice, those are quite costly. And so leveraging the simplicity of the Zoom platform and the cost effective devices and appliances from Yealink, like the Roomcast, um, has really allowed us to enable all sorts of different spaces. Awesome. So next we're going to move on to, John alluded to it earlier, AI. A lot of people are talking about AI. Let's not talk about it. Let's show you. So with our next few demonstrations, we're going to show you how AI has improved the day in the life of our meetings. So first and foremost, how common is this? Someone in a meeting picks up their coffee cup and you're hearing this. You're not really hearing me too well, right? That is a real thing. That's a real practical thing. Another thing is fumbling around with papers. So we're on the desk. And you're hearing these papers being shuffled around. This is all real stuff. And then the most annoying thing here at headquarters is when our salespeople close big deals, you, you hear that. Now, that is the gong. And by the way, that gong is much bigger than we have out in the sales floor. Um, but we want to show you basically how we can use noise block AI with this Yaylink A20. Let me jump in the call, show you how that works. Okay, so now you're hearing me over here. I'm gonna do the same things I just did, and I'm gonna pick up this over here, and right off the bat, I'm gonna go and bang on a little bit. How cool is this that it's the noise block AI, basically the ML knows those frequencies and it's blocking them out and focusing on my audio. Another thing I showed you was the ruffling of the papers. So I ruffle the papers over here. I can even take this over here and tear the paper, and you should not hear that. How cool is that? So very powerful with noise blocking. This is a practical use for AI. Um, and you know, over here, of course, I can go to the gong again. Dang it. And you're not hearing that. That's still going. It's reverberating in the background. That noise block AI is responsible for canceling out those frequencies that we don't want. And we focus more on what we do want, which is the dialogue that's happening in the meeting. So that is noise block AI, very powerful technology developed by the Yaylink team to be able to make meetings more pleasant. Um, next, what we want to show you as well along the AI courses over here is we're going to turn on something called Smart Gallery. So Ed, why don't you come and join me? My colleague Ed, Ed, uh, Ed over here is going to join me in the meeting. And the nice thing over here is uh, what you're going to see is the camera is going to look around the room and it's going to go ahead and find us and crop us out and do um, what we call Smart Gallery. So again, this is going to give us our own unique streams into the meeting over here. Um, right now, I think maybe we're sitting a little too close, Ed, so I'm going to get some distance away from you. Uh, so right there, it was just kind of framing us together. But give it a second. What's going to happen is it's going to give us our own unique quadrants that you're seeing over here. Um, the nice thing, again, this is AI using machine learning, going around the room, finding us, cropping us out, 
And um, Ed, is there something that else that the that uh, we could do over here beyond? So, uh, they introduced a, a, a product called Video Wall. And so with the Video Wall, we're able to crop out uh, a certain area that we want the camera to focus on. So you see that I have my own quadrant now that I'm standing in front of the couch. If I go stand behind the couch, it won't see me anymore and bring me into my own frame. So we're kicking Ed out of the room and uh, Ed still wants to stay in the call, but unfortunately he's now outside of the boundary. So Ed is completely eliminated now, even though he is really behind me, he's outside of that boundary. Now that's not AI, that's something that you actually um, you know, configure on the device, but very practical use of something when you don't want people like catering in the background or just people who come around the meetings uh, to be eliminated. We can eliminate the unwanted noise and the unwanted people, or maybe there's just simply a picture in the background that we don't want to take down. So very powerful technology here, very practical use. Yeah, and Mark, I want to call attention to something that you know may not have been uh, apparent during that, but we were sending three video streams from that single uh, Yay Link A20, right? And doing what we call Smart Gallery, uh, which sends those multiple streams. And in that, we saw kind of the whole room view where, you know, you get the context of who's in the space. And then over those other um, additional video streams, we saw Mark and Ed up close and personal. And as Mark and Ed were interjecting and talking, what we were doing is we were identifying the active speaker. You saw the green rectangle around either Mark or Ed as they were speaking. So we launched Smart Gallery about two years ago. Um, it, and this was not a feature that was supported. In fact, it's it's pretty unique to the A-Link devices to be able to identify inside of a room full of people who exactly is speaking and, pu and putting that um, active speaker rectangle around them. So um, definitely want to call attention to that because sometimes that's often missed in a super important part of the smart gallery experience and how we're delivering that better hybrid meeting equity in, in rooms and spaces. And we're going to kick that up a notch maybe 10 more notches right now in their next demonstration. Yeah. So we showed you Smart Gallery and we've shown you Multicam. John, as I go to the next space, maybe you want to tease them a little bit about what we could do when we bring those together. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as mentioned, we launched Smart Gallery, which is really focused around a single camera framing multiple faces simultaneously. Uh, that was about two years ago. Um, one of the next major releases after that was uh, you, we built off that concept of sending multiple streams from a single um, Zoom room, and that's uh, that's what enabled us to do multi-camera mode, which we actually saw in the, in the healthcare application. Still very practical in traditional conference rooms or training rooms where we want to have multiple cameras and we want to send all of those streams simultaneously. So both of those have been available for quite some time, but what we wanted to do is take both of those concepts and build it together, where we do have rooms that might require multiple cameras, but we want to deliver that end you know experience that is smart gallery, uh, where we see all the individual faces. And if there's a camera that can you know, pick up a better view of an individual, we want to use AI to, to determine the best possible view of each person and send that into the meeting. So um, really exciting with uh, Intelligent Director. You're gonna see a couple of demos here that leverage uh, multiple cameras uh, in, in both a classroom setting. We're gonna take it over to Dr. Lance Ford to see a couple of different uh, sized rooms and use cases uh, for Intelligent Director as well. So before we go over to Lanza, we want to show you the uh, training room or classroom we have here at Zoom headquarters. So this is about a 40 by 40 foot space. Um, we wanted to make it a simple installation because we used to have a complex set up here that was very intimidating to the presenters. So we had over here a rack full of AV gear. Again, the ceiling speakers, microphones, tons of AV gear, DSPs, the whole nine. We ripped it all out. We put one meeting board over here. By the way, I have the Yaling team right now that's in here, thank you for joining us. They're hard at work with the next features and products that they're coming out with. So I'm gonna invite them to take a break on their work right now and join us in the meeting. Um, but how cool is this? We ripped it all out. The meeting board over here, this is a 65 inch, all we did was give it power network, that's it. Now I do wanna point out, this system has two cameras. It has one over here, which is a wide angle camera in the front, it's in the privacy mode right now, the shutter. We have the PTZ one as well. And it's really cool what we could do with these cameras. So we're gonna show you what that's like. We put this at a 45 degree angle. Um, this is the media hub of the classroom. We're gonna use this for everything, whether we're just doing wireless screen share like we showed you earlier, or if we have a peripheral hooked up to this, um, or if we wanna do digital whiteboarding, this is how we're gonna go and teach. And it's super simple. So I'm gonna join you right now. Okay. 
So now I have it over here and um, I purposely kind of just left it right now in manual mode, which manual mode just has a shot of the room over here, the space and the, the folks, but I'm gonna turn on now something which is called uh, smart gallery, which we already showed you in the previous room. But when we turn that on now, we have two cameras in the space. So how cool is this? I'm gonna go ahead and start talking over here and uh, give it a second as it turns on. Uh, now it's turned on. It's gonna find the active speaker in the room, which is me right now, but it's also gonna show everybody else in the space using the uh, smart gallery, right? So we have the one camera getting smart gallery for everybody in the room, but we have that PTZ camera, which has an embedded microphone to find the active speaker. And um, you know, Aaron, how are you doing today, buddy? Yeah, so this is Ariel again. So uh, right now I'm uh, act as a student, right? So this is how Mark mentioned that how powerful of the dual cameras work together. So when uh, the system that find the active speaker, then they will use the PTZ to highlight the, the person who is active speaking. So this is very powerful and give quality image to the you know father and the students. Yeah, and when I want to take it back, basically, you're, you're still going to see me, but when I start talking, it's going to get the PTZ camera and give me that crystal clear shot. So the nice thing over here is uh, this is a two camera system on one board. Super simple to set up. Again, two camera systems used to be something you'd never attempt to install on your own. You need Navy integrator. This is something that our facilities team or myself could do in minutes. Um, now, this is the simple classroom, the simple classroom where we just have you know, this is a 40 by 40. There's going to be instances where you need to really kick it up to the next level. Um, and that's what Dr. Ford, who is one of the foremost experts in this field and is an actual teacher, so has to rely on this technology to teach classes. We're going to head over to Lance to see what Lance has done using a uh, Yaling technology in his classrooms. Over to you, Lance. You're muted, buddy. Lance, we still uh, we still have you on mute there, buddy. Well, we'll give Lance a second right now. Um, so basically, you know, Lance is going to make sure his camera, or sorry, his uh, microphones uh, are are going to go back on track. But you can see basically, you know, the power of this. And I'll just give you some more context over here as I walk throughout the space over here. So you know, if I want to walk to the back of the room again, this is I'm pretty far back at this point, and this is something that again. Um, you normally would not want to attempt, right? Um, and, and with just a non-PTZ environment. Uh, so this is something over here that, uh, you know, very powerful as I get to the back of the room and, and I go ahead and do that. So, um, you know, this is the power. I'm sitting back over here probably about now, about past 30 feet. And um, you can still see me and hear me as it zooms the camera in. Can you hear me okay now, Mark? Yep, we got you, buddy. Awesome. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, so welcome to my uh, my big classroom. I call this affectionately the big room. Um, and the reason I call it the big room is because it's about 60 feet wide, about 40 feet deep. And Mark has been showing you as we've worked around this process, some amazing cameras from Yale. Um, the UVC 86 is what you're seeing me on right now. I'm not wearing a tracking device. In fact, let me just put my phone in my pocket here. I'm going to take off and walk to the other side of the classroom. So at this point, I'm about 35 feet away from that camera. Now, this particular classroom slash training room is also tiered seating. So in order to get up to that back row and see what the students are actually doing, I'm going to just walk right up the uh, right up the steps here, focusing, hey, yeah, you guys are doing great. Now, again, when I'm teaching, I'm literally moving around. I don't stop. I'm just constantly going. I'm not only going with these students, but I'm going with students out there. There's a little dip here in the floor. I always have to be careful when I sit down. Um, we go clear, come on over here with go clear on over to the other side, right? So now we're about 30 feet the other direction away from the camera. So as we're doing this, you can see that I have a lot of freedom to move around. But one of the things Mark mentioned was what about multiple cameras? What if we could bring multiple cameras into this environment and have maybe have them in different modes as a part of it? So Lance, real quick. quick question. Do you have somebody in the background who's moving the camera around for you? Absolutely not, Mark. That is the uh, that is the UVC 86 doing its magic. Um, in fact, right now I've got three UVC 86s in this call. One of them is the teacher uh, called the presenter track mode. Okay, so as I walk around, it's fluidly going to track me. This guy over my shoulder right here, 
that's in speaker track mode. And you can see it's pointed back towards the students because when a student, and I'll try to do this for you in a second, when a student raises their hand and asks a question, this camera will find them and zoom in on them while this one continues to follow me. Now, the other camera I have in here is right over to the side. And the reason I brought that one to you is because I actually have it in sort of a static preset mode. I have it in the static preset mode because to, to your point earlier, Mark, when you were looking down on that patient from, from the top, the ability to choose a preset quickly and jump to different spaces is also something we use a lot in education as well. So all three cameras, three different modes. Let's walk over here and do the presenter track. So I'm gonna walk over here. Speaker track camera's waiting on somebody to get still and ask a question. And it may be this student at this computer. Hey, Dr. Ford, I've got a quick question for you. Um, I read last night's classroom information and I'm just really struggling with it. And I might say, well, that's a great question, Johnny. Uh, Susie, did you, were you struggling with it? She might be over here at this computer and she'll raise her hand and say, um, no, so Dr. Ford, as I read that, I used the cross-reference materials that you had in Google Classroom to really help me identify what I was working on in that scenario. Now, obviously, it's summer here, so I don't have any physical students with me, but that little demonstration hopefully gives you an idea of how all three of these cameras can function together simultaneously in different modes. And um, I, I just I wanted you guys to see that. Now, Mark also brought up the companion whiteboard. Um, Mark, I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're just going to yep. blow, up, blow up the meeting here. I know you're on a board. I'm on a board. And many times as we work together in these environments, it's imperative that we can co-annotate, coexist. I can put something out there. You might be able to finish it. So Mark's already going on his. I'm going to go ahead and do this on mine and uh, write some notes. Excellent. So whether you're using a board, whether you're using a laptop, whether you're joined with a phone or whether you're using an iPad, this is the new, I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate that. Um, this is the new Zoom Advanced Whiteboard. This whiteboard is amazing because through the partnership with Zoom Rooms, I can walk in here in the morning, open up all my content on the board, have it as the genesis of my live class. I've created it the night before. Right, because I don't have time in front of students to be dropping images in, adding all this sort of stuff. We're just literally going to have that ready, walk in. I'll start with display mode, and then from there, what I will do is I will turn it into interactive mode. For you math teachers who are out there, uh, this board is infinite in scope. So while you just see 65 inches of the, uh, the Yale Link meeting board, this actually can be blown out infinitely. You can zoom in, zoom out, go everywhere. You also have the ability to turn on a follow mode that allows students to follow you while you're in sort of the deep recesses of the board's corners or edges uh, doing your work. It's really an amazing tool. So, Mark, um, with that, my friend, I will give it back to you for now. We'll come back another day and explore the other room. I had done some uh, software updates on that this morning with Intelligent Director and uh, it may have uh, given my little microphone a hiccup there. So I'll get back to you on it, though. Awesome. Hey Lance, we had a question. Um, what is the compute running in that um, in the big room there? That's a great question. This is the ZVC840. This is the Yaylink uh, compute, uh, that same one that Mark actually had inside his healthcare environment. Um, it, it's running right down here below that. And I, since we're on the topic, John, I'm just going to go ahead and let me turn this back to this particular layout. It's really great because I have an overlay that allows me to choose whatever I want and give that to you guys. They have an AV switch, and Aaron does such a better job of communicating what all his capabilities are than I do. But, John, you've known me for a long time. I've probably installed 300 of these rooms at different schools at our school, upgraded things. In the past, every time I put a camera out on a wall somewhere, John, I had to put a control cable. I had to put a power cable. I had to put an HDMI cable. Three cables for each camera. Yaylink has made it so that it's a single Cat6 pull from there back to their AV hub. In fact, John, each one of these cameras is only one cable. The little speakers that you see, I don't know if you can see it below this monitor or not. That little speaker right there below that monitor, that is a CAT6 cable. The microphone system is CAT6 cabling. Everything is with the exact same kind of cabling, same ends, home run back to their AV switch. It's so much simpler to deploy. Yeah, and I'll just mention that, I mean, for those of us that didn't know what technology you're using, Lance, it looks like you have a production studio. It literally looks like 
someone in the background is following you around that. Now that's the power of, of another practical use of the AI in the UVC 86 cameras. Um, so for those of you out there, you know, think about it. In the past to do what Lance is doing, probably would have one or two people in the background making sure that the camera was cropping in. He's doing this all without that. So, you know, that's another cost savings of not having to have production crews all on site to be able to do this lecture. And by the way, Lance is walking around, doesn't have to worry about the technology, right? He's just learned to do the gestures of raising his hand, which the camera finds, walks around freely. We don't want to have to wear trackers on us. We don't want to have to wear lapel mics and all that stuff. This is all practical use on making it simple in the classroom with this technology from Yealink. And Mark, since you brought that up, I, one of the things I have to have in teaching, whether I'm in a training room or a classroom, is I have to have flexibility. So in the past, I've kind of been strapped to a 120 or 110 degree field of view. This is the back wall to which that camera is now. I'm 30 feet away from it. I'm 180 degree field of view because this is an optical PTZ, not a digital PTZ. Thank you, Yay Link, for giving me that flexibility. Awesome. That's awesome, well, Lance. And then one more question, if you could just touch on, uh, maybe yeah. Aaron uh, was was uh, responding here, but um, what's the what what are you doing for microphones in the room there? Yep. <laughs> Please don't ask Aaron because he's upset with me the way I did this. Um, I'm in a public school, y'all, so we count squares of toilet paper, right? We're pretty tight. Um, what I did was I took their desktop system. I ran a Cat6 cable to the first. In fact, my wife's not here, so I can do this. Uh, let's get over here. I took the cat six cable with the first one and don't tell people I get on the desk at school. Okay. Oh, all right. And it's literally right here. So it's, wow. it's Velcroed to the ceiling and it is looped from here to the other two. That's all that's picking me up. And there is no other microphone that I'm wearing. I'm not wearing a tracking device. And again, 60 by roughly 40. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lance. Great demos as always. Yep. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, you got a chance to see a lot of the Yealink devices working uh, natively with the Zoom platform today. Everything from the A10 for your small huddle spaces, uh, the A20, we saw demonstrations in our open flex space uh, for your medium sized conference rooms. The A30 was in that first conference room that we saw there. And of course, we've got a plethora of multi camera. Um, you know, larger multi-purpose space designs and classroom designs. Uh, I'm super excited about the personal, um, you know, unit that you guys are launching uh, with the A24. Um, so really excited about that. That will be a nice out-of-the-box solution for virtual kiosk, personal Zoom rooms, um, you know, phone booth style hot desking and things like that. And of course, the um, VP series uh, Zoom phone appliances as well. So not just complementing Zoom rooms and Zoom spaces, uh, but obviously, um, you know, the Zoom, uh, the Zoom phone side of the house as well. So really excited about how you all have built out the platform to complement um, everything that we're doing on the Zoom side. Uh, and, and just, you know, uh, kudos to, to the A-Link team for the speed of innovation, um, of feature development and enhancements, as well as bringing new products to market. It's uh, definitely a, a unique differentiator for you all in this, you know, in this modern time of um, lots of different hardware partners that uh, are part of our ecosystem and, you know, uh, just really been impressed with the innovation on your side. So thank you for all that. All right. So thank you so much for Zoom Room Specialist to host uh, such an ex uh, excellent uh, webinar for everyone and uh, hope everyone uh, enjoyed this webinar. And uh, if you have any open questions that uh, you cannot uh, just catch up in this webinar, just follow up with uh, any, can, uh, any contact from Zoom and eLink. Thank you so much for joining today's meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank all you. Right. Thank you all. You and guys. we will share the recording uh, once that's done processing. So again, thank you all. We'll share some, uh, some of the links in the follow-up as well. Um, we hope everyone has a great uh, day. And, and again, just to reiterate, if you have any questions, reach out to your Zoom account team. Uh, or if you know who your Zoom room specialist is, reach out directly to us. Uh, we look forward to uh, working with you all. So thank you so much for taking time out of the day. And uh, we'll see you all soon. See you. Thank you.